The liturgical year, also known as the church year or Christian year, as well as the calendar, consists of the cycle of liturgical seasons in Christian churches that determines when feast days, including celebrations of saints, are to be observed, and which portions of scripture are to be read either in an annual cycle or in a cycle of several years. Distinct liturgical colors may appear in connection with different seasons of the liturgical year. The dates of the festivals vary somewhat between the different churches, though the sequence and logic is largely the same. <inaudible> <inaudible> liturgical cycle The liturgical cycle divides the year into a series of seasons, each with their own mood, theological emphases, and modes of prayer, which can be signified by different ways of decorating churches, colors of paraments and vestments for clergy, scriptural readings, themes for preaching and even different traditions and practices often observed personally or in the home. In churches that follow the liturgical year, the scripture passages for each Sunday and even each day of the year in some traditions are specified in a lectionary. After the Protestant Reformation, Anglicans and Lutherans continued to follow the lectionary of the Roman Rite. Following a decision of the Second Vatican Council, the Catholic Church revised that lectionary in 1969, adopting a three-year cycle of readings for Sundays and a two-year cycle for weekdays. Adaptations of the revised Roman Rite lectionary were adopted by Protestants, leading to the publication in 1994 of the revised Common Lectionary for Sundays and Major Feasts, which is now used by many Protestant denominations, including also Methodists, Reformed, United, etc. This has led to a greater awareness of the traditional Christian year among Protestants, especially among mainline denominations. Biblical calendars Scholars are not in agreement about whether the calendars used by the Jews before the Babylonian exile were solar based on the return of the same relative position between the Sun and the Earth, lunisolar based on months that corresponded to the cycle of the Moon, with periodic additional months to bring the calendar back into agreement with the solar cycle like the present-day Jewish calendar of Hillel II, or purely lunar, as the Hijri calendar. The first month of the Hebrew year was called Bib Aviv, evidently adopted by Moses from IPIP as the eleventh month of the non-lunar Egyptian calendar that is also the origin of Abib as the tenth month of the non-lunar Ethiopian calendar, meaning the month of green ears of grain. Having to occur at the appropriate time in the spring, it thus was originally part of a tropical calendar. At about the time of the Babylonian exile, when using the Babylonian civil calendar, the Jews adopted as the name for the month the term Nisan, Nisan based on the Babylonian name Nisanu. Thomas J. Talley says that the adoption of the Babylonian term occurred even before the exile. In the earlier calendar, most of the months were simply called by a number, such as the fifth month. The Babylonian derived names of the month that are used by Jews are Nisan, March to April, Iyar, April to May, Sivan, May to June, Tammuz, June to July, Avenue, July August, Alul, August September. Tishrei September to October Heshvan October to November Kislev November to December Tevet December to January Shvat January to February Adar February to March in biblical times the following Jewish religious feasts were celebrated Pesach Passover 14 Nisan sacrifice of a lamb 15 Nisan Passover Seder Shavuot Pentecost 50th day counted from Passover normally 6 Sivan Day of blowing shofar trumpet now known as Rosh Hashanah 1 Tishrei Yom Kippur Day of Atonement 10 Tishrei Sukkot Tabernacles 15 Tishrei Hanukkah dedication or lights 25 Kislev instituted in 164 BC Purim lots 14 Adar instituted C 400 BC Topic Eastern Christianity Topic East Syriac Rite The liturgical calendar of the Catholic Churches of East Syriac Rite i.e. the Chaldean Catholic Church and the Syro-Malabar Catholic Church is fixed according to the flow of salvation history. 
With a focus upon the historical life of Jesus Christ, believers are led to the eschatological fulfillment i.e. the heavenly bliss through this special arrangement of liturgical seasons. The liturgical year is divided into eight seasons of approximately seven weeks each but adjusted to fit the solar calendar. The arrangement of the seasons in the liturgical year is based on seven central events on celebrations of the salvation history. They are Nativity of Christ Epiphany of Christ Resurrection of Christ Pentecost Transfiguration Glorious Cross Parousia the dedication of church after Christ's second coming the biblical reading and prayers during Mass and liturgy of the hours varies according to different seasons in liturgical calendar. <laughs> liturgical calendar The various seasons of the liturgical calendar of Syro-Malabar Church and Chaldean Catholic Church are given below. Annunciation Weeks of Annunciation is the first season of the liturgical year. The liturgical year begins with the proclamation and celebration of the historical encounter between God and man in the person of Jesus Christ, the human appearance of the divine person. The Syriac word subara, annunciation, with which the Church qualified the first five or six weeks of her liturgical year, is, in fact, an announcement and proclamation with celebration with this supreme glad news of divine condescension to the human frailty in order to raise it up to the divine sublimity. The season begins on the Sunday just before the 1st of December and ends with the Feast of Epiphany that is Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. This season is developed in the context of the mystery of incarnation completed in the fullness of time. The Church recalls during these days the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist, the predecessor of Jesus, and also the joyful event of the birth of John the Baptist. As a preparation for the celebration of the mystery of incarnation, this season also recalls creation, disobedience of our first parents and its consequences, the miserable state of the broken humanity, the promise of salvation offered by God, God's covenant with humanity, and the prophecies about the Savior. During this season we also meditate on the role of Mary in the history of the plan of salvation. The whole importance of Mary, and hence her veneration in the Church, depends on her relation to Jesus, the most special being his mother. Her celebration is also underlined with two very solemn festivals of her, Immaculate Conception on December 8 and Congratulation to Mary as Mother of Jesus on the last Friday of this season. The Church practices abstinence during December 1-25 in preparation for Christmas, this period is called 25 Days Lent. Feasts celebrated during this season Feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary, Mother of Jesus December 8th. Feast of Miraculous Cross of Mylapore St. Thomas Christian Cross December 18th in Syro-Malabar Church. Nativity of Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or Christmas December 25th. Feast of Holy Infants December 28th Feast of Name Iso January 1st Feast of Mary Mother of Jesus last Friday of season Topic <inaudible> Epiphany Denha Weeks of Epiphany begins on the Sunday closer to the Feast of Epiphany and runs to the beginning of Great Fast The word Denha in Syriac means sunrise during the period the faithful meditates on the manifestation of Holy Trinity and revelation of Christ the light of the world. Baptism in Jordan was the first historical event when the Holy Trinity is revealed to humans in the humanity of Jesus Christ. During the season church celebrate the feasts of saints in connection with the manifestation of the Lord. Feasts celebrated during the period feast of Epiphany or feast of baptism of the Lord January 6th. Feast of St. John the Baptist on First Friday of Epiphany Feast of Apostles Peter and Paul on Second Friday of Epiphany Feast of Evangelists on Third Friday of Epiphany Feast of St. Stephen on Fourth Friday of Epiphany Feast of Fathers of Church on Fifth Friday of Epiphany Feast of Patron Saint of Church on Sixth Friday of Epiphany Feast of All Departed Faithful on Last Friday of Epiphany Topic. Great Fast Sama Rabbah. 
During these weeks the faithful reflect on and meditate over the public life of Jesus and especially on its culmination in his passion, death and burial. The season begins 50 days before Easter on Petrta Sunday and comprises whole period of Great Lent and culminates on Resurrection Sunday. Word Petrta in Syriac means, looking back, or reconciliation. It is a God-given time for turning to one's own life more deeply and to become convinced of the abundant blessings of the loving God, the creation, the providential caring, the human fall, the helplessness of man to save himself, the promise of salvation, the redemption through his Son Jesus and the Passion of the Christ. Faithful enter the weeks of great fast, celebrating the memory of all the faithful departed on the last Friday of Denha. According to the ecclesial and liturgical vision of this tradition, the weeks of great fast is also an occasion to keep up the memory of the beloved departed through special prayers, renunciation, almsgiving, and so on and thus prepare oneself for a good death and resurrection in Jesus Christ. During the fast faithful of Syro-Malabar Church do not use meat, fish egg many dairy products and most favorite food items and also avoid sexual contacts on all days including Sundays and feast days. Before European colonization Indian Nasranis used to take only food on once in a day after 3 p.m. on all days during Great Fast. Feasts in Lenten season Petrta Sunday on first Sunday of Great Fast Ash Monday or Clean Monday on first day Monday of Great Fast Lazarus Friday on sixth Friday of Great Fast Oshana Sunday on seventh Sunday of Great Fast Thursday of Pesha Friday of Passion or Good Friday Great Saturday or Saturday of Light Following feasts comes in the Lenten season always Feast of Mar Cyril of Jerusalem March 18th. Feast of Saint Joseph March 19th. Feast of the Annunciation March 25th. Topic. Resurrection Kyamta. Weeks of Great Resurrection begins on the Resurrection Sunday and runs to the Feast of Pentecost. The Church celebrates the resurrection of our Lord during these seven weeks, Jesus' victory over death, sin, suffering and Satan. It is the season to exult in the new life obtained through the resurrection of the Savior. Church also commemorates various events happened after resurrection of Christ such as visits of Jesus to Apostles, Ascension of Jesus. According to the Eastern Christianity Feast of Resurrection is the most important and the greatest feast in a liturgical year. So season commemorating Resurrection of Christ also gets a prime importance in the Church liturgy. First week of the season is celebrated as Week of Weeks as it is the Week of Resurrection of Christ. Feasts celebrated during the period Feast of Resurrection of Christ Feast of All Confessors Saints on First Friday of Kyamta New Sunday or Saint Thomas Sunday on second Sunday of Kyamta Feast of Ascension of Jesus on sixth Friday of Kyamta following feasts comes in the season of resurrection always Feast of Saint George April 24th Feast of Mark the Evangelist April 25th Feast of Saint Joseph the Worker May 1st Feasts of Saint Philip and Saint James the Apostles May 3rd Topic Apostles Slyhi. Weeks of Apostles starts on the Feast of Pentecost, 50th day of the Resurrection Sunday. During these days Church commemorates the inauguration of Church and the Acts of Apostles and Church Fathers, through which the foundation of Church is laid. Church meditates on the virtues of early Church like fellowship, breaking of bread and sharing of wealth and the fruits and gifts of Holy Spirit. Spread of church all over the world as well as her growth is also remembered during this season. Feast celebrated during the season Feast of Pentecost on first Sunday of Slyhi Feast of Friday of Gold, the first commemoration of first miracle of apostles done by Saint Peter. Following are the feast commemorated in the season of Slyhi Feast of Mar Aphrem Feast of Apostles Peter and Paul Feast of Mar Thomas, founding father of East Syriac churches. Topic: <inaudible> Eastern Orthodox Church. The liturgical year in the Eastern Orthodox Church is characterized by alternating fasts and feasts, and is in many ways similar to the Roman Catholic year. 
However, Church New Year indiction traditionally begins on September 1st, old style or new style, rather than the first Sunday of Advent. It includes both feasts on the fixed cycle and the paschal cycle or movable cycle. The most important feast day by far is the feast of Pascha, Easter, the feast of feasts. Then the 12 great feasts, which commemorate various significant events in the lives of Jesus Christ and of the Theotokos, Virgin Mary. The majority of Orthodox Christians Russians, in particular, follow the Julian calendar in calculating their ecclesiastical feasts, but many including the Ecumenical Patriarchate and the Church of Greece, while preserving the Julian calculation for feasts on the Paschal cycle, have adopted the revised Julian calendar at present coinciding with the Gregorian calendar to calculate those feasts which are fixed according to the calendar date. Between 1900 and 2100, there is a 13-day difference between the dates of the Julian and the revised Julian and Gregorian calendars. Thus, for example, where Christmas is celebrated on December 25 OS old style, the celebration coincides with January 7 in the revised calendar. The computation of the day of Pascha is, however, always computed according to a lunar calendar based on the Julian calendar, even by those churches which observe the revised calendar. There are four fasting seasons during the year. The most important fast is Great Lent, which is an intense time of fasting, alms giving, and prayer, extending for 40 days prior to Palm Sunday and Holy Week, as a preparation for Pascha. The Nativity Fast Winter Lent is a time of preparation for the Feast of the Nativity of Christ, Christmas, but whereas Advent in the West lasts only four weeks, Nativity Fast lasts a full 40 days. The Apostles' Fast is variable in length, lasting anywhere from eight days to six weeks, in preparation for the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul June 29. The Dormition Fast lasts for two weeks from August 1 to August 14 in preparation for the Feast of the Dormition of the Theotokos August 15. The liturgical year is so constructed that during each of these fasting seasons, one of the great feasts occurs, so that fasting may be tempered with joy. In addition to these fasting seasons, Orthodox Christians fast on Wednesdays and Fridays throughout the year and some Orthodox monasteries also observe Monday as a fast day. Certain fixed days are always fast days, even if they fall on a Saturday or Sunday in which case the fast is lessened somewhat, but not abrogated altogether. These are, the day collation of St. John the Baptist, the exaltation of the cross and the day before the Epiphany January 5th. There are several fast-free periods, when it is forbidden to fast, even on Wednesday and Friday. These are, the week following Pascha, the week following Pentecost, the period from the Nativity of Christ until January 5 and the first week of the Triodion, the week following the 17th Sunday before Pentecost. Pascha The greatest feast is Pascha. Easter for both East and West is calculated as the first Sunday after the full moon that falls on or after March 21, nominally the day of the vernal equinox, but the Orthodox calculations are based on the Julian calendar, whose March 21 corresponds at present with April 3 of the Gregorian calendar, and on calculations of the date of full moon different from those used in the West see Computus for further details. The date of Pascha is central to the entire ecclesiastical year, determining not only the date for the beginning of Great Lent and Pentecost, but affecting the cycle of movable feasts, of scriptural readings and the Octoechos texts chanted according to the eight ecclesiastical modes throughout the year. There are also a number of lesser feasts throughout the year that are based upon the date of Pascha. The movable cycle begins on the Zacchaeus Sunday the first Sunday in preparation for Great Lent or the 33rd Sunday after Pentecost as it is known, though the cycle of the Octoechos continues until Palm Sunday. The date of Pascha affects the following liturgical seasons. The period of the Triodion the Sundays before Great Lent, Cheese Fair Week, Palm Sunday, and Holy Week. The period of the Pentecostarian Sunday of Pascha through the Sunday after Pentecost which is also called the Sunday of All Saints. Topic: The 12 Great Feasts. Some of these feasts follow the fixed cycle and some follow the movable Paschal cycle. Most of those on the fixed cycle have a period of preparation called a forefeast, and a period of celebration afterward, similar to the western octave, called an afterfeast. Great feasts on the paschal cycle do not have forefeasts. The lengths of forefeasts and afterfeasts vary, according to the feast. 
Nativity of the Theotokos, September 8. Birth of the Theotokos to Joachim and Anna. Elevation of the Cross, September 14. The rediscovery of the original cross on which Christ was crucified. Entrance of the Theotokos into the Temple, November 21. The entry of the Theotokos into the Temple around the age of three. Nativity of Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, December 25. The birth of Jesus, or Christmas. Theophany, January 6. The baptism of Jesus Christ, Christ's blessing of the water, and the revealing of Christ as God. Presentation of Our Lord in the Temple, February 2. Christ's presentation as an infant in the Temple by the Theotokos and Joseph. Annunciation of the Theotokos, March 25. Gabriel's announcement to the Theotokos that she will conceive the Christ, and her willful agreement the retinote, in Eastern practice, should this feast fall during Holy Week or on Pascha itself, the feast of the Annunciation is not transferred to another day. In fact, the conjunction of the feasts of the Annunciation and Pascha known as Dipal Paschalia, Dipli Paschalia in modern Greek is considered an extremely festive event. Entry into Jerusalem Sunday before Pascha, Known in the West as Palm Sunday Ascension 40 days after Pascha Christ's ascension into heaven following his resurrection Pentecost 50 days after Pascha The Holy Spirit comes and indwells the apostles and other Christian believers Transfiguration of our Lord August 6 Christ's transfiguration is witnessed by Peter James and John Dormition of the Theotokos August 15 The falling asleep of the Theotokos CF the Assumption of Mary in Western Christianity Other feasts Some additional feasts are observed with as though they were great feasts The Protection of the Mother of God October 1st, especially among the Russian Orthodox The Feast of St. James the Just October 23rd. The Feast of St. Demetrius of Thessaloniki October 26th. The Feast of the Holy Archangels Michael and Gabriel November 8. The Feast of St. Nicholas, the Bishop of Myra in Lycia December 6. The Feast of the Conception of Mary by Saints Joachim and Anne December 9. The Feast of St. Spiridon December 12. The Feast of St. Stephen the Deacon December 27. The Feast of St. Basil the Great and the Circumcision of Christ January 1. The Feast of the Three Holy Hierarchs, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian and John Chrysostom January 30th. The Feast of the Forty Martyrs of Sebaste March 9th. The Feast of St. Patrick March 17th. The Feast of St. George April 23rd. The Feast of the Holy Emperors Constantine and Helen May 21st. The Nativity of St. John the Baptist June 24th. The Feast of Saints Peter and Paul June 29th. The Feast of St. Elijah the Prophet July 20th. The Feast of St. Christina of Bolsena the Great Martyr July 27. The Beheading of St. John the Baptist August 29th. Beginning of the Indiction Ecclesiastical Year September 1st. The Patronal Feast of a Church or Monastery Every day throughout the year commemorates some saint or some event in the lives of Christ or the Theotokos. When a feast on the movable cycle occurs, the feast on the fixed cycle that was set for that calendar day is transferred, with the propers of the feast often being chanted at Compline on the nearest convenient day. <laughs> cycles In addition to the fixed and movable cycles, there are a number of other liturgical cycles in the ecclesiastical year that affect the celebration of the divine services. These include, the daily cycle, the weekly cycle, the cycle of Matins Gospels, and the Octoechos. <inaudible> Western Christianity Western Christian liturgical calendars are based on the cycle of the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, including Lutheran, Anglican, and other Protestant calendars since this cycle pre-dates the Reformation. Generally, the liturgical seasons in Western Christianity are Advent, Christmas, Ordinary Time, time after Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and Ordinary Time, time after Pentecost. 
Some Protestant traditions do not include ordinary time, every day falls into a denominated season. Vanderbilt University professor Hoyt L. Hickman, with regard to the calendars of the Western Christians churches that use the revised common lectionary, including Presbyterians, Methodists, Anglicans, Episcopalians, Lutherans and some Baptists, among others, states that all these calendars agree that the Lord's Day is of primary importance among the observances of the year and that the Christian year contains two central cycles the Easter cycle and the Christmas cycle. Each cycle includes a festival season Easter and Christmas, preceded by a season of preparation and anticipation Lent and Advent. In most denominational versions and in the common lectionary, Lent and Advent are immediately preceded by a transitional Sunday Transfiguration and Christ the King, and the Easter and Christmas seasons are immediately followed by a transitional Sunday Trinity and Baptism of the Lord. Protestant churches, with exception of the Lutheran and Anglican, generally observe fewer feasts with regard to the saints, than the aforementioned liturgical denominations, in addition to the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches. Denominational specifics Catholic Church The Catholic Church sets aside certain days and seasons of each year to recall and celebrate various events in the life of Christ. In its Roman rite the liturgical year begins with Advent, the time of preparation for both the celebration of Jesus' birth, and his expected second coming at the end of time. This season lasts until Christmas Eve on December 24. Christmastide follows, beginning with first Vespers of Christmas on the evening of December 24 and ending with the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. Traditionally, the end of Christmastide was February 2, or the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, also known as Candlemas. This feast recounts the forty days of rest Mary took before being purified and presenting her firstborn son to the temple in Jerusalem. Lent is the period of purification and penance that begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Thursday. The Holy Thursday evening Mass of the Lord's Supper marks the beginning of the Easter Triduum, which includes Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. The days of the Easter Triduum recall Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples, death on the cross, burial, and resurrection. The seven-week liturgical season of Easter immediately follows the Triduum, climaxing at Pentecost. This last feast recalls the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus' disciples after the ascension of Jesus. The rest of the liturgical year is commonly known as ordinary time. There are many forms of liturgy in the Catholic Church. Even putting aside the many Eastern rites in use, the Latin liturgical rites alone include the Ambrosian rite, the Mozarabic rite, and the Cistercian rite, as well as other forms that have been largely abandoned in favor of adopting the Roman rite. Of this rite, what is now the ordinary? or, to use a word employed in the letter of Pope Benedict XVI accompanying the motu proprio summorum pontificum, the normal form is that which developed from the Second Vatican Council to the present day, while the form in force in 1962 is authorized as an extraordinary form of the Roman Rite without restriction in private celebrations, and under the conditions indicated in Article 5 of the Motu Proprio Summorum Pontificum in public celebrations, the liturgical calendar in that form of the Roman Rite see General Roman Calendar of 1960 differs in some respects from that of the present ordinary form, as will be noted below, and also from the earlier General Roman calendar of Pope Pius XII, the still earlier General Roman calendar of 1954 and the original Tridentine calendar. These articles can be consulted with regard to the Roman Rite liturgical year before 1960. <laughs> Lutheran churches <laughs> Anglican Church the Church of England, Mother Church of the Anglican Communion, uses a liturgical year that is in most respects identical to that of the Roman Church. While this is less true of the calendars contained within the Book of Common Prayer and the Alternative Service Book 1980, it is particularly true since the Anglican Church adopted its new pattern of services and liturgies contained within Common Worship, in 2000. Certainly, the broad division of the year into the Christmas and Easter seasons, interspersed with periods of ordinary time, is identical, and the majority of the festivals and commemorations are also celebrated, with a few exceptions. 
In some Anglican traditions including the Church of England the Christmas season is followed by an Epiphany season, which begins on the eve of the Epiphany on the 6th of January or the nearest Sunday and ends on the Feast of the Presentation on February 2nd or the nearest Sunday. Ordinary time then begins after this period. The Book of Common Prayer contains within it the traditional Western Eucharistic lectionary which traces its roots to the comes of St. Jerome in the 5th century. Its similarity to the ancient lectionary is particularly obvious during Trinity season Sundays after the Sunday after Pentecost, reflecting that understanding of sanctification. Reformed churches Reformed Christians emphasize weekly celebration of the Lord's Day and, while some of them celebrate also what they call the five evangelical feasts, others celebrate no holy days. <laughs> Liturgical calendar <laughs> Advent Advent from the Latin word adventus, which means arrival or coming, is the first season of the liturgical year. It begins four Sundays before Christmas, the Sunday falling on or nearest to November 30, and ends on Christmas Eve. Traditionally observed as a fast, it focuses on preparation for the coming of Christ, not only the coming of the Christ child at Christmas, but also, in the first weeks, on the eschatological final coming of Christ, making Advent a period for devout and joyful expectation." This season is often marked by the Advent wreath, a garland of evergreens with four candles. Although the main symbolism of the Advent wreath is simply marking the progression of time, many churches attach themes to each candle, most often hope, faith, joy, and love. Other popular devotions during Advent include the use of the Advent calendar or the Tree of Jesse to count down the days to Christmas. Liturgical color, violet or purple, blue in some traditions, such as Methodist, Episcopalian, and Lutheran. Christmastide The Christmas season immediately follows Advent. The traditional 12 days of Christmas begin with Christmas Eve on the evening of December 24 and continue until the Feast of Epiphany. The actual Christmas season continues until the Feast of the Baptism of Christ, which in the present form of the Roman Rite is celebrated on the Sunday after January 6, or the following Monday if that Sunday is Epiphany. In the pre-1970 form, this feast is celebrated on January 13, unless January 13 is a Sunday, in which case the Feast of the Holy Family is celebrated instead. Until the suppression of the octave of the Epiphany in the 1960 reforms, January 13 was the octave day of the Epiphany, providing the date for the end of the season. Traditionally, the end of Christmastide was February 2, or the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, also known as Candlemas. This feast recounts the 40 days of rest Mary took before being purified and presenting her first-born son to the Temple in Jerusalem. In medieval times, Candlemas Eve February 1st marked the day when all Christmas decorations, including the Christmas tree and the nativity scene, were taken down. However, the tradition of ending Christmastide on Candlemas has slowly waned, except in some pockets of the Hispanic world where Candlemas or La Fiesta de la Candelaria is still an important feast and the unofficial end of the Christmas season. Liturgical color, white. Topic. Ordinary time Ordinary comes from the same root as our word, ordinal, and in this sense means, the counted weeks. In the Roman Catholic Church and in some Protestant traditions, these are the common weeks which do not belong to a proper season. In Latin, these seasons are called the weeks per annum, or, through the year. In the current form of the Roman Rite adopted following the Second Vatican Council, ordinary time consists of 33 or 34 Sundays and is divided into two sections. The first portion extends from the day following the Feast of the Baptism of Christ until the day before Ash Wednesday the beginning of Lent. It contains anywhere from three to eight Sundays, depending on how early or late Easter falls. The main focus in the readings of the Mass is Christ's earthly ministry, rather than any one particular event. 
The counting of the Sundays resumes following Eastertide, however, two Sundays are replaced by Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, and depending on whether the year has 52 or 53 weeks, one may be omitted. In the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite, the time after Epiphany has anywhere from one to six Sundays. As in the current form of the Rite, the season mainly concerns Christ's preaching and ministry, with many of his parables read as the Gospel readings. The season begins on January 14 and ends on the Saturday before Septuagesima Sunday. Omitted Sundays after Epiphany are transferred to time after Pentecost and celebrated between the 23rd and the last Sunday after Pentecost according to an order indicated in the Code of Rubrics, 18, with complete omission of any for which there is no Sunday available in the current year. Before the 1960 revisions, the omitted Sunday would be celebrated on the Saturday before Septuagesima Sunday, or, in the case of the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, on the Saturday before the last Sunday after Pentecost. Liturgical color, green. Topic. Septuagesima, pre-Lenten season Septuagesima from the Latin word for 70th, is a two-and-a-half week period before Lent. This pre-Lent season is present in the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite and in some Protestant calendars. It is a transition from the first part of the season per annum to the season of Lent, and a preparation for the fasting and penance which begin on Ash Wednesday. Although most of the divine office remains the same as during the season per annum, certain customs of Lent are adopted, including the suppression of the Alleluia. The replacement of the Alleluia at Mass with the tract and the Gloria is no longer said on Sundays. In the 1969 reform of the Roman Rite, this intermediate season was removed, with these weeks becoming part of ordinary time. Liturgical color where observed, violet or purple. Topic. Lent and Passiontide Lent is a major penitential season of preparation for Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday and, if the penitential days of Good Friday and Holy Saturday are included, lasts for 40 days, since the six Sundays within the season are not counted. In the Roman Rite, the Gloria in Excelsis Deo and the Te Deum are not used in the Mass and Liturgy of the Hours respectively, except on solemnities and feasts, and the Alleluia and verse that usually precede the reading of the Gospel is either omitted or replaced with another acclamation. Lutheran churches make these same omissions. As in Advent, the deacon and subdeacon of the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite do not wear their habitual dalmatic and tunical signs of joy in masses of the season during Lent, instead they wear folded chasubles in accordance with the ancient custom. In the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite, the two weeks before Easter form the season of Passiontide, a subsection of the Lenten season that begins with Matins of Ash Wednesday and ends immediately before the Mass of the Easter Vigil. In this form, what used to be officially called Passion Sunday, has the official name of the first Sunday in Passiontide, and Palm Sunday has the additional name of the second Sunday in Passiontide. In Sunday and Ferial Masses but not on feasts celebrated in the first of these two weeks the Gloria Patri is omitted at the entrance antiphon and at the lavabo, as well as in the responds in the Divine Office. In the post-1969 form of the Roman Rite, Passion Sunday and Palm Sunday are both names for the Sunday before Easter, officially called Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. The former Passion Sunday became a fifth Sunday of Lent. The earlier form reads Matthew's account on Sunday, Mark's on Tuesday, and Luke's on Wednesday, while the post-1969 form reads the Passion only on Palm Sunday with the three synoptic Gospels arranged in a three-year cycle and on Good Friday, when it reads the Passion according to John, as also do earlier forms of the Roman Rite. The veiling of crucifixes and images of the saints with violet cloth, which was obligatory before 1970, is left to the decision of the National Bishops' Conferences. In the United States, it is permitted but not required, at the discretion of the pastor. In all forms, the readings concern the events leading up to the Last Supper and the betrayal, passion, and death of Christ. The week before Easter is called Holy Week. In the Roman Rite, feasts that fall within that week are simply omitted, unless they have the rank of solemnity, in which case they are transferred to another date. The only solemnities inscribed in the general calendar that can fall within that week are those of St. Joseph and the Annunciation. Liturgical color, violet or purple. 
The color rose may be used, where it is the practice, on Laetare Sunday, fourth Sunday of Lent. On Palm Sunday the color since 1970 is red, by earlier rules violet or purple, with red being used after 1955 for the blessing of the palms. Easter Triduum The Easter Triduum consists of Good Friday, Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday. Each of these days begins liturgically not with the morning but with the preceding evening. The Triduum begins on the evening before Good Friday with Mass of the Lord's Supper, celebrated with white vestments, and often includes a ritual of ceremonial footwashing. It is customary on this night for a vigil involving private prayer to take place, beginning after the evening service and continuing until midnight. This vigil is occasionally renewed at dawn, continuing until the Good Friday liturgy. During the day of Good Friday Mass is not celebrated in the Catholic Church. Instead a celebration of the Passion of the Lord is held in the afternoon or evening. It consists of three parts, a liturgy of the Word that includes the reading of the account of the Passion by John the Evangelist and concludes with a solemn universal prayer. Other churches also have their Good Friday commemoration of the Passion. The color of vestments varies, no color, red, or black are used in different traditions. Colored hangings may be removed. Lutheran churches often either remove colorful adornments and icons, or veil them with drab cloth. The service is usually plain with somber music, ending with the congregation leaving in silence. In the Roman Catholic, some Lutheran, and High Anglican rites, a crucifix not necessarily the one which stands on or near the altar on other days of the year is ceremoniously unveiled. Other crucifixes are unveiled, without ceremony, after the service. Holy Saturday commemorates the day during which Christ lay in the tomb. In the Roman Catholic Church, there is no Mass on this day, the Easter Vigil Mass, which, though celebrated properly at the following midnight, is often celebrated in the evening, is an Easter Mass. With no liturgical celebration, there is no question of a liturgical color. The Easter Vigil is held in the night between Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. See also Paschal Candle. The liturgical color is white, often together with gold. In the Roman Rite, during the Gloria in Excelsis Deo. The organ and bells are used in the liturgy for the first time in two days, and the statues, which have been veiled during Passiontide at least in the Roman Rite through the 1962 version, are unveiled. In Lutheran churches, colors and icons are re-displayed as well. <laughs> Eastertide Easter is the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. The date of Easter varies from year to year, according to a lunar calendar dating system see Computus for details. In the Roman Rite, the Easter season extends from the Easter Vigil through Pentecost Sunday. In the pre-1970 form of the Rite, this season includes also the octave of Pentecost, so Eastertide lasts until none of the following Saturday. In the Roman Rite, the Easter octave allows no other feasts to be celebrated or commemorated during it. A solemnity, such as the Annunciation, falling within it is transferred to the following Monday. If Easter Sunday or Easter Monday falls on 25 April, the Greater Litanies, which in the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite are on that day, are transferred to the following Tuesday, by a decree of May 5, 2000, the second Sunday of Easter the Sunday after Easter Day itself, is known also in the Roman Rite as the Feast of the Divine Mercy, Ascension Thursday, which celebrates the return of Jesus to heaven following his resurrection, is the 40th day of Easter, but, in places where it is not observed as a holy day of obligation, the post-1969 form of the Roman Rite transfers it to the following Sunday, Pentecost is the 50th and last day of the Easter season. It celebrates the sending of the Holy Spirit to the Apostles, which traditionally marks the birth of the Church, see also Apostolic Age. Liturgical color, white, but red on the Feast of Pentecost. Topic. Ordinary time, time after Pentecost, time after Trinity, or Kingdom Tide. This season, under various names, follows the Easter season and the feasts of Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost. In the post-1969 form of the Roman Rite, ordinary time resumes on Pentecost Monday, omitting the Sunday which would have fallen on Pentecost. In the earlier form, where Pentecost is celebrated with an octave, the time after Pentecost begins at Vespers on the Saturday after Pentecost. 
The Sundays resume their numbering at the point that will make the Sunday before Advent the 34th, omitting any weeks for which there is no room present-day form of the Roman Rite or are numbered as Sundays after Pentecost. Pre-1970 Roman Rite, Eastern Orthodoxy and some Protestants or as Sundays after Trinity, some Protestants. This season ends on the Saturday before the first Sunday of Advent. Feasts during this season include Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost. Corpus Christi, Roman Rite and some Anglican and Lutheran traditions, Thursday of the second week after Pentecost, often celebrated on the following Sunday. Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Roman Rite, Friday in the third week after Pentecost. World Day of the Poor, 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Feast of Christ the King, last Sunday before Advent, Roman Rite, Lutherans, Anglicans, or last Sunday in October 1925 to 1969 form of the Roman Rite. In the final few weeks of ordinary time, many churches direct attention to the coming of the kingdom of God, thus ending the liturgical year with an eschatological theme that is one of the predominant themes of the season of Advent that began the liturgical year. For instance, in the pre-1970 form of the Roman Rite, the Gospel of the Last Sunday is Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 to 35 and in the later form of that rite all the last three Sundays have similar themes. While the Roman Rite adopts no special designation for this final part of ordinary time, some denominations do, and may also change the liturgical color. The Church of England uses the term, Sundays before Advent for the final four Sundays and permits red vestments as an alternative. Other denominations, including the United Methodist Church and the Christian Church, Synod of St. Timothy, speak of Kingdom Tide. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod LCMS uses the terms third last, second last and last Sunday in the church year and does not change from green. The LCMS does not officially celebrate a Feast of Christ the King. The Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod Wells uses the term period of end times and assigns red vestments to the first and second Sundays. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Calendar of Saints. In some Protestant traditions, especially those with closer ties to the Lutheran tradition, Reformation Sunday is celebrated on the Sunday preceding October 31, commemorating the purported day Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses on the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg. The liturgical color is red, celebrating the Holy Spirit's continuing work in renewing the Church. Most Western traditions celebrate All Saints' Day, All Hallows Day on November 1st or the Sunday following, with the eve of this feast, All Hallows' Eve being October 31st. The liturgical color is white. The following day, November 2nd, is All Souls' Day. The period including these days is often referred to as All Hallowtide or All Saints' Tide. Saints' Days are observed by Lutherans and include the Apostles, Virgin Mary and noteworthy figures in the Christian faith. The Confession of St. Peter Week of Prayer for Christian Unity starting on January 18. Conversion of St. Paul ended Week of Prayer on January 25. Martin Luther King Jr., Renewer of Society, Martyr January 15, Elka only, Presentation of Our Lord and Purification of the Mary Candlemas on February 2. Joseph, Guardian of Jesus St. Joseph on March 19, Annunciation March 25, Visitation of Mary on May 31. Lutherans also celebrate St. John the Baptist or the beheading of St. John the Baptist on June 24, St. Mary Magdalene July 22, St. Mary, Mother of Our Lord or the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary on August 15, Holy Cross Day September 14, Francis of Assisi, Renewal of the Church St. Francis of Assisi on October 4, and the Holy Innocents, Martyrs December 28. Lesser feasts and commemorations on the Lutheran liturgical calendar include Anthony of Egypt on January 17 Henry, Bishop of Uppsala, Martyr Henry of Uppsala on January 19 Timothy, Titus and Silas, Missionaries St. Timothy, Street Titus and St. Silas Day on January 26 Ansgar, Bishop of Hamburg, Missionary to Denmark and Sweden St. Ansgar on February 3, Cyril, Monk and Methodius, Bishop, Missionaries to the Slavs St. Cyril and St. Methodius on February 14 
14, Gregory the Great on March 12, St. Patrick on March 17, Olavus Petrie, priest and Laurentius Petrie, Bishop of Uppsala, on April 19, St. Anselm on April 21, Catherine of Siena on April 29, St. Athanasius on May 2, St. Monica on May 4, Eric IX of Sweden on May 18, St. Boniface on June 5, Basil the Great, Gregory of Nyssa and Gregory of Nazianus on June 14, Benedict of Nursia on July 11, Brigitta of Sweden on July 23, Saint Anne, Mother of Mary on July 26, Saint Dominic on August 8, Augustine of Hippo on August 28, Saint Cyprian on September 16, Teresa of Avila on October 15, Martin de Porres on November 3, Martin of Tours on November 11, Elizabeth of Hungary on November 17, Saint Lucy on December 13. There are many other holy days in the Lutheran calendar. Some traditions celebrate St. Michael's Day on September 29. Some traditions celebrate St. Martin's Day on November 11. Liturgical colors, white if the saint was not martyred, red if the saint was martyred. <laughs> Hierarchy of feast days There are degrees of solemnity of the office of the feast days of saints. In the 13th century, the Roman Rite distinguished three ranks, simple, semidouble and double, with consequent differences in the recitation of the divine office or breviary. The simple feast commenced with the chapter capitulum of First Vespers, and ended with none. It had three lessons and took the psalms of matins from the ferial office, the rest of the office was like the semidouble. The semidouble feast had two vespers, nine lessons in matins, and ended with compline. The antiphons before the psalms were only intoned. In the Mass, the semidouble had always at least three orationes, or collects. On a double feast the antiphons were sung in their entirety, before and after the psalms, while in lauds and vespers there were no suffragia of the saints, and the Mass had only one oratio, if no commemoration was prescribed. If ordinary double feasts referred to also as lesser doubles occurred with feasts of a higher rank, they could be simplified, except the octave days of some feasts and the feasts of the doctors of the church, which were transferred. To the existing distinction between major and ordinary or minor doubles, Pope Clement VIII added two more ranks, those of first-class or second-class doubles. Some of these two classes were kept with octaves. This was still the situation when the 1907 article Ecclesiastical Feasts in the Catholic Encyclopedia was written. In accordance with the rules then in force, feast days of any form of double, if impeded by occurrence, falling on the same day with a feast day of higher class, were transferred to another day. Pope Pius X simplified matters considerably in his 1911 reform of the Roman breviary. In the case of occurrence the lower ranking feast day could become a commemoration within the celebration of the higher ranking one. Until then, ordinary doubles took precedence over most of the semidouble Sundays, resulting in many of the Sunday Masses rarely being said. While retaining the semidouble rite for Sundays, Pius X's reform permitted only the most important feast days to be celebrated on Sunday, although commemorations were still made until Pope John XXIII's reform of 1960. The division into doubles of various kinds, semidoubles and simples continued until 1955, when Pope Pius XII abolished the rank of semidouble, making all the previous semidoubles simples, and reducing the previous simples to a mere commemoration in the mass of another feast day or of the feria on which they fell see General Roman Calendar of Pope Pius XII. Then, in 1960, Pope John XXIII issued the Code of Rubrics, completely ending the ranking of feast days by doubles etc., and replacing it by a ranking, applied not only to feast days but to all liturgical days, as I, II, III, and IV class days. The 1969 revision by Pope Paul VI divided feast days into solemnities, feasts, and memorials, corresponding approximately to Pope John XXIII's I, II and III class feast days. Commemorations were abolished. While some of the memorials are considered obligatory, others are optional, permitting a choice on some days between two or three memorials, or between one or more memorials and the celebration of the feria. On a day to which no obligatory celebration is assigned, the Mass may be of any saint mentioned in the Roman martyrology for that day. Assumption of Mary 
Observed by Roman Catholics and some Anglicans on August 15, which is the same as the Eastern and Orthodox Feast of the Dormition, the end of the earthly life of the Virgin Mary and, for some, her bodily assumption into heaven, is celebrated. The Roman Catholic teaching on this feast was defined as dogma on November 1, 1950 by Pope Pius XII in the papal bull, Munificentissimus Deus. In other Anglican and Lutheran traditions, as well as a few others, August 15 is celebrated as Saint Mary, Mother of the Lord. Liturgical color, white. Secular <inaudible> <inaudible> observance <inaudible> 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 Because of the dominance of Christianity in Europe throughout the Middle Ages, many features of the Christian year became incorporated into the secular calendar. Many of its feasts, e.g., Christmas, Mardi Gras, St. Patrick's Day, remain holidays and are now celebrated by people of all faiths and none, in some cases worldwide. The secular celebrations bear varying degrees of likeness to the religious feasts from which they derived, often also including elements of ritual from pagan festivals of similar date. See also Ranks of Catholic liturgical days Christian worship non-Judeo-Christian Wheel of the Year